Glorious day. This is Zach Mitchum, your host of What Jesus Says. We want to welcome you back and being so faithful and join us every Friday at 6 30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to learn more about what Jesus has to say on controversial issues facing us today. This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and be glad in it. We're glad to have you guys here. We want to lift up a shout of uh, victory for prayer requests and reports that the Lord is indeed faithful for my little nephew Michael his son was in a car accident Antonio and he's recovering he's still in the hospital and we want to continue to pray for him that he continues to heal aggressively and we plead the blood of Jesus over his life and we also plead the blood of Jesus over the peace of the parents that lost their loved one in that car accident so let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord God, I thank you, Jesus, for all the victories that you've given us over these years. I thank you for all the love you presented to us in the form of uh, being obedient to the cross, even to the cross, Lord God, that you died for us. I pray for those that are less fortunate, Jesus, those that are in hospitals, nursing homes, hospices, those that are unemployed, homeless, incarcerated, those that are even on death row, that you give them pr- peace, Lord. I pray for our apostles, prophets, evangelists, preachers, and teachers, local and universal. I pray for our uh, churches, local and universal. I pray for our leaders all over the world. I pray for our enemies that they cease from troubling Jesus. I pray for peace and peace of Jerusalem, that you prosper, that love the holy city. Peace be with my gates, prosperity in their palaces. I pray for the salvation of Israel, that they come to know you as their God, Lord, and Savior, Jesus Christ. I pray for our uh, men and women in uniform, Lord God, instead of civil service. And I offer this broadcast over to you, Lord God, that we can know what it is to be your children and to live a life that's pleasing to you. So we're going to go ahead and get our phone lines open and call our special guests, see what they got to say. Okay, it seems like our callers are trying to call in. Hello. Hello, Anjanette Clark. You want to tell us who you Hello. are? I guess I've already uh, told who you are. You want to tell us who you are, where you call Anjanette. it from? Anjanette Glasper, Wine and Jordan. All right. So are you ready tonight? or you? I am. Okay. I'm riding my kids, so no telling what you might hear me. Okay. Ram. Okay. All right. Well, we went, we're going to keep your secrets safe with us. Let's see who else we have. Uh, get them on the line. All right. So how was your week? So how was your week? Forwarded to an automated oh, voice messaging system. It was great. 
Annie Mae Mitchum. Okay. Is not available. At the tone, please record your message. When you finished record. Okay. I wonder what happened with our other callers. Hello. Hey, do you own the line? Um, no. Yeah, was in the bathroom when you called. I tried to give her the phone. Oh. She's waiting for you to call back. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Which, which phone did she? I was telling them to call you back. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Hello? All right, who do we have on the line? You have Annie May Mitchum. Hey, you want to tell us? Uh, hey, baby. Hey, baby. You want to give a shout out for your uh, what just took place this past week for you? What the Lord has done for me. Go ahead. He's blessed me to be here for 92 wonderful years. So, what do you want to be when you grow up? When I grow up, I want to be a <laughs> child of God. <laughs> <laughs> now, wh who's you that last? You got a short mind for 92. Huh? What, honey? You sure got a short mind. Hey, Amen. Isn't that a blessing? Yes, it is. Amen. So because all of our help comes from him. Hallelujah. That's why I like that verse by trusting it with all of your heart. Trust in God with all of your heart and lean not on to your own understanding and all of your ways and knowledge him and he will direct that path. And I want to also send out ninety two years. Give God glory for uh his being faithful with our, our nephew and grandson's child, he's still with us, and that's a blessing as well. So we don't want to forget that. This time last year, uh, she was in uh, ICU. So can you imagine? Oh, yeah, I was yeah. in rehab. Yeah. She wasn't expected to live. Amen. And look at God, right? And so he did mm. a marvelous thing twice. My little nephew Amen. was in a car accident, but uh, the Lord saw fit to spare him as well. So we're going to uh, pray for the family that lost their loved one in that car accident. Obviously, we don't want to overlook that. So we want to thank yeah. God for being so faithful and, and uh, allowing us to. And we want you guys to start learning beforehand to get prepared. So you say he said he'd give his angels charge over you lest you dash your feet against a stone. You don't want to wait to see if you got en enough credit to try to uh, make a purchase on something is embarrassing when you go to a store and they say, uh, your card ain't no good. Mm. Just imagine if God said, you ain't got no credit. You ain't got nothing built up. But he would never do that because he's a gracious God, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm. So, but keep in mind, you know, he has the last word on everything, okay? Yeah. All right. So we're going to go to First Samuel. How about that? The third chapter. For those that okay. you that want to follow along with us we're going to talk about uh being able to uh, correct those in your house because god doesn't overlook that this is a a thing that a lot of times we as parents don't want to do because we love our children and at at much true and <laughs> and admonishing our children is very important i'm gonna show you how god works with this because uh if he can't get you to do it he'll raise somebody else right up under your roof to do it and that'll be an embarrassing yeah. thing as well so everybody ready if you want to participate in yeah. tonight's conversation dial 919 this is zach mitchum your host of what jesus said everybody ready yeah. okay yeah. so here we are third chapter first verse and the child samuel ministered unto the lord before eli and the word of the lord was precious in those days there was no open vision, and it came to pass that time, at time, when Eli was laid down in his place, his eyes began wax dim that he could not 
see and uh, air the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was and Samuel was laid down to sleep that the Lord called Samuel and he answered here am I and he ran in, unto Eli and said here I am did you here I am and he ran unto Eli and said here I am for thou callest me and he said I called not lie down again and he went and lay down. And the Lord called yet again, Samuel. And Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not, my son, lay down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of God, the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel, Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood and called as at a other time, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, say, Speak, for thy servant hears. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel, at which both the ears of everyone that hear it shall tingle. In that day I will perform ag against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house, when I begin, I will also make an end, for I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth, because his sons made themselves vile, and he restrained them not. And therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice nor offering forever. And Samuel lay until the morning and opened the door of the house of the Lord. And Samuel feared to show Eli the vision. Then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he answered, here am I. And he said, what is the thing that the Lord. Now, this is going to get tight. <laughs> For the Lord has said unto thee, I pray thee. I pray thee, hide it not from me. God do so to thee, and more also, if thou hide anything from me of all the things that he said unto thee. And Samuel told him every whit, and hid nothing from him. And he said, It is the Lord, let him do what seemeth him good. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him and did let none of his words fall to the ground. Okay, so what can we discern from what we just heard in the word? Anybody want to try to s take a stab at it? Uh, to be able to correct. Now, help us out. Did you hear what the uh, he was calling Eli? I mean, uh, Samuel and okay. So you heard what the Lord called Samuel, correct? Uh huh. He called and, Samuel. And what did he tell Samuel? He he called Samuel. And he told him uh, that he wanted him. Uh, I'm not sure. He, he, I know he called him. Okay, called all right. So this is going to be important because it's just like when you go to church, right? And you read your scriptures, you get happy, but you don't recall what's going on. That's very, uh, 
That's not good. You got to understand what you just heard. Now, what happened was God called Samuel to his ministry because of the Uh failings of Eli. Eli had done things that he didn't restrain his children from doing. Uh Okay, have you ever? What did they say? He called him to do his ministry. Yeah, but be, why did he call Eli? I mean Samuel. To do the ministry to Eli and the rest of them. Eli failed to do what God commanded him to do. Do you understand? He didn't. Eli, co- his hey, children. Samuel. You want me to read it again? I want you to explain it to me. All right. Well, like I said, he told Samuel that Eli Uh allowed his sons to do things that were uh, not pleasing in the sight of God. You didn't hear me read that? I heard you read it, but it just hadn't Mm. been in my mind. Do you, anybody else hear that? On the line. Somebody is responding. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. What How did you What did you hear? How did y'all understand that? I didn't. That's why I want him to. That's right. I okay. So hear. when you so heard it, what what? Come in and relax. I got you. But when you it. heard it being when read. It's all when it's that, <laughs> what What didn't you understand about what you heard was being read? Okay. Um, e- go ahead. Just explain it. So I don't know where to disconnect so we can understand. This is how we study so that you'll know what's going on in the scripture. So when you hear it read in the pulpit, you don't, you know, you got to understand what's going on, the context in which it was given, right? Okay, Eli was going to sleep, all right? Mm -hmm. And and Mm -hmm. so was Samuel. And God called Samuel and Samuel thought it was Eli calling him, right? He said, mm-hmm. I didn't call you. You understood that, right? Yeah, he yes. Eli called Samuel, yeah. And Eli did not call Samuel. It was uh, God calling Samuel. And Eli mm-hmm. said, Next time he he calls you, just say, Here I'm here I am, Lord, speak. Right? And when the okay. when the Lord spoke to Samuel, he said, "Listen, I'm gonna do a new thing. I'm gonna do a thing in Israel, because uh, Eli has allowed his his sons to do things that are vile in the temple. Vile means unpleasing to him, right? They were uh-huh. doing, and he didn't correct it. He didn't. He said he restrained them not, right? Uh, do you sound under- like huh? Go ahead. Sometimes." It sounds like us sometimes. And so what happens, though, but listen, you got a problem when you do that because he's giving mm-hmm. you as a parent an authority yeah. over these children to raise them yes. in the admonition of the Lord. And if you don't do it correctly, uh, he's going he's gonna, to uh, show his disapproval. Now, don't mm-hmm. you think it was pretty awkward that uh, Eli said, what did the Lord say to you? And he said, "Don't you, mm. don't you uh, leave out anything, lest it happen to you, as uh, mm. as much." You didn't hear it being read that way. I read that. He said, "Now look, I want you to tell me everything God told you to say." I mean, think <laughs> of, now think about this. And and uh, Samuel was respectful of Eli. That was his uh, mentor, and he said he told him everything. But when he told Eli what God said, he said, "That's the Lord." Let it be according to his will. You understand? Mm -hmm. You can't, look, you can't, uh, just because you love someone, even if they're your children, you have to tell them Mm -hmm. when they're not doing something that's right. You can't be so, that's one thing that uh, growing up, I did understand. My parents didn't play this, I'm your friend thing. You understand? Now, when they got older, Mm -hmm. when they got older, they start getting a little off the gas, but they corrected you. You understand? Yeah. And mm-hmm. so, right. and and so when uh, just like when the Lord told us we had fathers 
of the flesh that we respected, how much more would we respect it? the father spirits and live this is zach mitchum your host of what jesus says if you want to participate in night's conversation dial uh, 919-747-3572 okay so let me let me go to a scripture and and i want you to read is there anybody out there that can read it do you have some situation where you can read anybody can you hear me answer me <laughs> Yeah, I'm listening. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now we're deep. I can't read in okay, the car. I, I can't. I anyway. got you. I got you. All right. So go. We're gonna go to Hebrews twelve nine. So Hebrews everybody else, can you go nine. to Hebrews twelve nine and let me know when you get it now. Hebrews twelve nine. Hebrews twelve nine. What age do you kind of get, look, get off the gas a little bit, I guess? You don't I have say. to let off no gas no time. I don't care if they're 90 years old. You still got to tell. Really? That's you right. You still tell them whether they do it or not, right? Uh, well, mm -hmm. look, there's a there's a, a a problem associated with this. Uh, let me go to this. Yeah. Let me go to this. My mother used to tell me this. I ain't understand what she was saying, but she 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 has since forgotten we're going to go to Hebrews 5, 9, but let's go to Hebrews uh, first. Off, we're going to go to 10, 26, and I'm going to show you something. It's a danger because back mm. in the day, yeah, it's a danger because, uh, you know, you don't disrespect your parents. I don't care what age they are or whatever you think in your mind is correct. Uh, it's a danger yeah. in doing that because you can lose your life. Uh, <laughs> he said, long mm. life will I satisfy thee and show you my salvation. He said, Honor thy mother and thy father, thy father and thy mother, that thy days be long upon the land in which the Lord thy God giveth thee. You understand? Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. So we're going to go to Hebrews 10, 26. Who else got a word out there? Can you read anybody? It's three people on the line. Speak no. up. I'm not able to. I know. That's fine. What about the other one? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what about the others? And so <laughs> the only person who can read is the one that's taking so long to get the scripture. <laughs> I asked you, did you have it? Taking you so long to get it. Okay. She's gonna find it. What she does, she's gonna read. I'm talking to you. Oh. Okay, well, I thought I'm you. Listening. Okay, you. I'm, I'm listening. Okay, so we're gonna go. To, let me read. Okay, Hebrews ten twenty six. You ready? Yes. Yes. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sin. You understand mm -hmm. that? If we sin willfully, there's no more sacrifice for sin. No, but you overlooked some things. He said after you've come to the knowledge of truth. Oh, uh -huh. after, after you know about God and you come to sin. There remains no, oh, okay. no sacrifice. Got we got it. For a certain fearful looking for judgment and fiery indignation which shall divide the adversary. He despises Moses' law, died without mercy under two or three witnesses. How much sore punishment, suppose ye, shall be thought worthy who have trodden underfoot the Son of God and have counted his blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing. And have done despite unto the spirit of grace. Do you understand what he's saying? Now, if it to, if you died under Moses' law, he said, if you kill, you'll be killed. How much sore punishment do you think it'll be if you died under God's? Uh, mm. Isn't that what you just heard? Yeah, that's what mm -hmm. we just heard. Okay. Died under Moses and died under God. That's what we want you to explain for us. Well, the point Moses, is, he Moses was the law. That that yeah. was that was just okay. uh, under dead, like physically dead. So the other one is a spiritual implication. That means you probably going to hell. I mean, a mm. how you going to die? What what can you do to a dead man? No, when you're dead, you don't. Okay, and so he said, how much? <laughs> Well, he, he gave you another oh. option. You got to listen. He said, how much so a punishment? How worse a punishment do you think it'll be 
if you died under God uh, uh, rule. He mm. said, how much worthy have trodden under the foot of the Son of God and have counted his blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and have done despite the spirit of grace. He gave you a question. He said, if you died under Moses' law, that was bad, but can you imagine what I'm going to do to you? Oh, man. <laughs> ain't nothing you could do when you're dead. You can't do nothing to a dead man. A dead man is dead. So once you're dead, you got mm -hmm. judgment. You understand? Cool. For we know that we know him that hath said, vengeance belongs unto me. I will recompense. In other words, I will pay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. Now listen, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Mm -hmm. So when my mother was telling me you in God's hands, and I'm like, okay, that's good. I'm glad to keep you from keep running your mouth. Huh? I was in a bad shape and didn't even know it, right? Mm -hmm. Did you hear what God just said in Hebrews 10, 20, uh, 6 through 30? He says a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. Ooh -wee. Yeah, ooh wee. <laughs> And see, <laughs> and you don't get too grown for that. And see, that's why I don't uh -huh. care who you are. You better recognize mm -hmm. that when God has put out an edict, sometimes we get kind of, you know, uh, I, you know, I'm, I, 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 a, a, a young lady even made that comment. She said she don't believe. I asked her what she was a Christian, and she had, she told me, sir, I don't believe in fairy tales. I said, wow, that's mm -hmm. a, well, uh, I can't hold that against her because. You know, y'all don't put all this Easter bunny and and, uh, and <laughs> two fairy, two fairy and, and everything, yes, and and, and Santa Claus. You know, put, told them all them lies, so she wrapped it all up. These new kids are saying all oh, that's fairy tale. Jesus ain't real either. Prove to me Jesus is mm. real, and see they get callous and, and and jaded about it, and say they don't. They take offense over the name of Jesus. But I was raised in the admonition of the Lord, and I ain't, I've I, I been whipped up by him. See, if you ain't never been beat up or, or seen his visitation, you all going to get a visitation. I don't care how long you live, it's coming back. You're going to reap what you sow. And if you did something that was yes, disrespectful, mm. you're going to get it. You're going to probably get it at the worst time in your life. You might even want to be bothered yes, with that. Yes. And that's why he told oh, Eli, yes. he said, Eli, and Eli was an old man. He said, look, think about it. He's correct. He's bringing up a, a person, a young person, in the house of the person that raised this young man. He, he's raising mm -hmm. Samuel. He's living in Samuel's house. And, and Eli said, what did God tell you? He said, you messed up is what he said. Now, how can you, <laughs> well, how can you, how do you feel Eli bringing that to his, uh, like his daddy, his elder? Bringing that message of God mm. to like that, that that's scary, oh, isn't it? Lord. He said, it is. He said, uh, "Your house is going to be on the judgment, Eli, and uh, he's going to bring it down, and you know what you did, and that's what he told him." Now, <laughs> and Eli said, "Don't hey, tell me everything. Don't hold back nothing, or it's going to come back on you." And uh, Samuel was feared, but he told him everything. And after that, uh, Samuel said, be it unto a uh, Lord according to his will. Be it unto, uh, let, the, let the will of the God, the Lord uh, be done. All right. So let's let's read uh, Hebrews 12, 9. See, uh, when you're in a position of leadership, and that's being a parent mm -hmm. as well, you have a lot of responsibility. A lot oh. of responsibility. Yeah. And if you don't do the things according to what the Lord was telling you, you received that condemnation. You understand? Mm -hmm. And he said, you are under spirit of grace. And if you overlook that, oh, he's going to say, oh, you don't just do that in my face. And he said, God will judge his people, not me. All I'm telling you is what he said. This is coming directly from the word of God. And in Hebrews mm -hmm. 12, 9, he said, furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. In other words, we respected them. Shall we not much more 
uh, shall we not much rather be subjected in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? He's giving you an option. You can die. Yeah. You can die in your indignation or you can live as a uh, obedient child. Right. And some people are, are, you know, are living with issues. Right. <clears throat> I can't I can't yeah. speak to uh, whatever happened in people's lives. Right. But uh, it's for some reason, Eli couldn't correct his children. And as a result of that, mm. God brought that uh, uh, admonition to his attention. And all of a sudden, he picked another person to do his will. You understand? Mm -hmm. All right. So everybody clear on uh, what God told you with respect to 1 Samuel? Now, when you get a chance to mm -hmm. study it, yeah. say it again. I say yes. I, he has no respect of person. Without question. And he don't care how old you get. Uh, you remember when uh, he told Moses to speak to the rock and Moses uh, yeah. hit the rock? And after mm -hmm. all that stuff Moses went through, I would imagine Moses was saying, you got to be kidding me, right? <laughs> when God said, well, <laughs> you go sit over there and you ain't going in. And Moses must be saying, mm. uh, are you kidding? Uh, surely I should make it. If anybody make it, he said, you ain't going in. You ain't going to make it to the promised land. Because you, uh, you uh, did things according to your own will. Can you imagine God telling you you ain't going to make it? Oh, That's going to be some gnashing of teeth, right? Oh. And, see, and the older you get, <laughs> the closer you get to understanding your mortality. You ain't getting no younger. Yeah, it's true, yeah. Yeah, and I know it's true. You ain't getting no closer to, to one year old, eh? <laughs> <laughs> huh? That's that no. bit. That was that Benjamin Buttons dude that got younger, and he just got so young he just disappeared or something. It don't work like that. For those people that don't know the Lord, it's very simple. He said in Romans ten nine, he said, "If you confess with your mouth, Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, then you're saved." Because with belief, uh, with your mouth, confession is made unto uh, salvation, and belief is made unto righteousness. And confession is made unto salvation. Belief is made unto righteousness. And confession is made unto salvation. A lot of people don't know who the Lord is, you know. If you go to your word, he says there's only one Lord, one faith, and ba one baptism. Correct? That's Ephesians 4, 5. And to know the Lord is very important. Because if you don't know that Jesus is God, a lot of people don't. And because they were raised incorrectly in terms of how the church taught them, then uh, you need to write these down so you can study them and know who Jesus is. You ready? If you can write, can you write? Can, mm -mm. can, can you, you can't write? Okay. So these are the scriptures. Then you should go back and study if you can remember. Hebrews. It'll be on your broadcast. Well, yeah, you can go listen to it. Okay. Okay, Philippians, okay. Philippians 2. Let's go, let's see. Philippians 2, 9 and 10. 2, 9. And it says, starting with the ninth verse, okay. 2, 9. Wherefore, God also have highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and, every time and, and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord is to the Lord. glory of the God and the Father. Do you know what that means? That everybody, before they can come to the Father, must confess. Confess what? Down. Confess what? That he is Lord. All right. Now, all right, I want you to clear your mind out so you understand what I just said. You just said Jesus is Lord, right? Jesus is Lord. All right, so if you go to Ephesians 4, 5. This is how you teach it so you can explain it to people because they don't know Jesus is God. So Ephesians 4, 5 says, There's one Lord, 
one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. And you just said that Jesus is what? Yes, Lord. Lord. All right. That being the case, Jesus Lord. must then be who? Lord. Huh? Lord. Yes, Lord. So ask that question again. Jesus, I just gave you the two. You said every knee oh. shall confess that Jesus is Lord. And so, G, the Lord is God. In Psalms, that's what I'm trying to convey to you, oh so that you, you can. Oh, okay. Okay, hold on, so that you can get it. If you go to Psalms 127. Because if you don't teach them correctly, they don't go around thinking that uh, 118, 27, 118, 27. 118. Psalms 118, 27. And just read the first few words. What does it say? Somebody got it. You don't have a word. In uh, it says, uh, 27, the Lord is God. All right, and you just said in Philippians Lord, two. Hold God. on, slow down. The Lord is God, correct? Is that what you just said? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you in Romans ten nine said what? In Romans ten nine, you must said that, um, confess that He is Lord. And if He's Lord, He must be mm -hmm. what? Uh, mm -hmm. God. Because mm -hmm. there is only one mm -hmm. Lord. One God, one baptism in Ephesians 4, 5, correct? Mm -hmm. Did you read Ephesians 4, 5? Yes. Mm -hmm. And what did it say? That every knee must bow. No, that's Philippians. That. That's Philippians. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 4, 5 is saying there is only one Lord one faith and one faith. baptism one and one faith. God and one Father of all, right? One Lord. Yes, one faith and one baptism. So if that being the case, it ain't if it's being the case, that is the case, and you go to Psalm 120, uh, 118, 27, it's telling you who the Lord is. Who is the Lord? God. God. Amen. The Lord is God, and Romans 10, 9 tells you who the Lord is. And who is that? God. No. He, he, okay. He said you ha he sp specifies it. Romans 10, 9 said, if you confess with your mouth, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Okay, Lord Jesus. And believe in your heart. God raised him from the dead. Do you make the connection? Because if yeah. you don't make the connection, people will be saying, those are two different people. They're not. They're the same person. And in Philippians, it tells you every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is what? Is Lord. Lord. Amen. And in Psalm 120, 118, 27, it says the Lord is who? Is God. Oh, God. oh, now you got the connection? Yeah. It ain't no two ways about it. If you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, it ain't but one Lord. Right? And, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And that must be mean that Jesus is Lord. And Philip, and not Philip, but Thomas even called. He said, my Lord and my God, right? Yes, Lord. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, so now that we know who God is, now that we've talked about correction and admonition of our children and making sure that they understand their rightful position, it, you get to a point where you, you can't whip somebody. I mean, you you love them. You want them to prosper. You want them to live. You want to live a life free of uh, all this anxiety and all this hurt and pain. You don't want your children going through that. Who wants that? That's a fool that would want that, right? That on their children. So you have to admonish them and correct them because just like Lloyd said, otherwise they'll be a bastard. He said he corrects those that he what? Love. He love. If he didn't love you, he wouldn't. He say, "Oh, get over there, you bastard! I ain't got no time for you." 
but he corrects you <laughs> because he loves you. You understand? Right. All right, so let's sum up what we talked about tonight. We know that Jesus is Lord, all right, and every knee yeah. shall bow and every and tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. And in Psalm 118, 27, it says the Lord is God. Right. Now, it's not and trivial when, that uh -oh. a, a lot of people don't understand that. So when you teach it, you got to understand you're going to get a lot of resistance from that, especially from people like them folks coming knocking on your door on Saturday and all that. Because they don't believe that Jesus is God. You understand? <laughs> Okay, anybody want to add anything to the conversation before we sign off? And most and most of all, when he called, we need to answer. Here I am, Lord. Whatever you want me to do, wherever you want me to go, wherever you want me to stay, you can use me. Well, you better understand that's, that's not trivial. That's a serious calling because, like he said, Eli was fearful. That he had to, that's just like you, me telling my mother uh, something that God mm. said. And if I lie, he going to hold that against me. He said, now I want you to tell well, your oh mother. Man. He said, I want Ooh. you to tell your mother this. But that will hurt her feeling. What did I say? You go, tell your, um. you go tell your mother this, or you go tell your daughter this, or you go tell your sister that. Oh, but, man. Lord, that's some hard stuff you just said. Well, you better tell them that I said they're going to get a visitation. And when they see it as a visitation from me, you'll know it was God. And it comes in the most mm. clumsy way. But I'm going to be obedient, and I'm going to do what God tells me to do. I don't care who it is. You understand? Uh, yeah. All right. Everybody clear. I enjoy this one. I really enjoy <laughs> a lot. Now, when you, when you want to go back and listen too. to the broadcast, you can go back to I am www dot spreaker s p r e a k e r dot c o m dot com spreaker dot com to learn more about what Jesus has to say on controversial issues facing us today. Amen. All right, so that's signing off. We're gonna see you again next. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, El El Yono Adonai. Age to age, you're still the same. By the power of your name, El Shaddai, El Shaddai, El Kom Kona Adonai, I will praise and lift you high, El Shaddai. Through your love and through the ram, you saved the son of Abraham.